Do we know how this happened? Well, I found Chris in Morgan's apartment, just lying on the floor, alone, barely conscious. He was apparently the victim of an assault. Where's Ozzy? No sign of him. So we don't know if Fax got to him. Fax? Or... Fax Newman? You mean he did this to my son? That's a good little girl. Good little girl. See, they didn't even see us. Getting by the cops was a piece of cake. Yeah? I'm impressed. Well, stick with me, kid, and you'll go far. I wonder where our little friend is. Ozzy is not going to come back here. You think Ozzy's going to come back here? We'll see. So what are you going to do? Are you going to kill everybody who knows who you are? I'm the stalker. At least that's what the papers call me. They'll never catch me. It's so much fun watching them get it wrong. You really can't get away with this forever fast. Sure I can. By now, poor Mr. Jordan has bled to death all over his diamond watches. And when we find our little friend, the two of you can hold hands while I put you both out of your misery. You know, that's not going to be it for you, though, Fax. Because, you see, everybody knows who you are now. The cops know who you are. The hospital knows who you are. The papers know who you are. What are you going to do? You're going to kill everybody in Bay City? Well, I'll have to buy some more ammunition. And all this bloodshed is for what? For what, Fax? Because Blair was blackmailing Blair you? Baker was greedy and arrogant. She found out things about me and, and tried to use them against me. I lost a patient. Poor Margaret, Margaret Banning. I, I really liked her. It was an accident. The medical board didn't see it that way. They wouldn't give me a second chance, but I wasn't going to let them stop me. I have a mission. I am a doctor. And I was going to practice medicine no matter what they say. I was fine until Blair checked through her police sources and found out about my, my Ford's medical license and my, my real name and my, my rich family. She went after everything I have. She would have bled me dry. I had no choice. If I didn't pay her, she'd blow the whistle on me and my medical career would be over. I would have lost everything. I am a great healer. Healer? John Hudson is a healer. Morgan Winthrop is a healer. You're nothing but a coward. I know, I know that you think it's crazy, you know, why do I keep coming here and talking to, to a dead man, but um, we've all been through a lot, and this is just something that I need to do. You know how you don't have No explanations, okay? I'm just glad you let me come along. And I wouldn't take no for an answer. Bridget said lean on you, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Well, I think that's a good idea. You know, maybe one day we can, um, sit down and talk. You know, it's just that I used to share everything with him. You know, every day I walk down the street and I see something that I want to tell him about. It. It's not like I try to make it happen. I don't try to make him, you know, come to me. He just comes and he gets me and, and I can't stop it. I've tried. It's just no good. He's he's with me. And something awful and tragic has happened to someone who he loved very much and I just I need to tell him about it. Joe, would you go home? Go home and be with Pauline and Dante. I can't do that. Sophia, there's a manhunt on right now, and I can't rest until it's all over. Who are you after? There's going to be a press briefing later, so, uh... It's Fax Newman. The doctor? Yeah, we also think he's a stalker. You kidding me? No. A hell of a lot of evidence piling up. Listen, do me a favor and stay close to her tonight. Yeah, yeah, sure I will. Who was the ambulance for? It was Chris Madison. He just got beat up over at Morgan's place. Oh, no. But by who? Fax? Yeah. This is incredible. Listen, 
Uh, maybe I should take Sophia home. No, no, no. You know, ordinarily, I would say that's a good idea, but tonight, everybody's here. The place is crawling with cops. This is probably the safest place to be. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, listen, I'm out of here, okay? Joe, Joe, yeah. be careful. Okay? I'll be careful. But I won't rest until this piece of garbage is off the streets of Bay City. Turn here. Hey, how's he doing? Come on. He's lucky to be alive. Must have missed the karate. Let's go. That's right. Office. Yeah, yeah. I'm right here. I'm right here. Officer Watts. <laughs> what about her? Where is she? Train Trestle. Train Trestle? Is that where she is? Is that where she is? Come on, is that where she is? Get him out of here. Go, go. Tibbs. Come here. Listen, I need you calling for backup on this. You tell him the old train trestle, the one outside of town, all right? It's got to be where Fax took her. I'm going there, man. I am a brilliant doctor. How dare you compare me to Morgan Winthrop? He is nothing but a pathetic hack, ineffectual, slow, always asking the grown-ups for help. If I get my chance, he's dead me too. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Fax. You know what, I think that you're a brilliant doctor. You know, you saved John Hudson when he almost died from malaria, right? Well, I think that, that you deserve a second chance. I think everyone deserves it. Darn right! Darn right! You'd rather use that chance to, to help people, not hurt them. Of course, but Blair got in the way. You, that, you, that you can do good, Max. I still do. Why don't you tell me about yourself? Why don't you? Why don't you tell me what kind of a doctor you want to be? Ow! Ah! 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 I am so sorry, Chris. I was so totally blind about facts. I, I thought he was a decent guy. I thought he was a good doctor. And he almost killed you. Why does it always have to be like this? I mean, why are we only close when there's some kind of crisis? Otherwise, we're always fighting. I don't want it to be like this anymore. Please, Chris. Why can't we just love each other? How's he doing? Oh, he's he's gonna pull through. We were very lucky. You really were. I keep telling him he's gotta take his work less seriously. Give it a rest, will you? I'm sorry. Say um, no. It's just what he always said to me when he was growing up, when I was working double rotations at the hospital. No. Oh. Know where he gets his work ethic now. Yeah. A lot of good it does. Either of us. He's a great guy. You should be very proud of him. Oh, I am. More than he knows. Oh. <laughs> No, oh, he hates it when I talk about him as if he's not here. He's our best reporter. We're not about to lose him. Chris, I'm sure my brother and the police will find the man who did this to you. Oh, let's hope they do. You're going to be up and out of here before you know it. Running around, getting copy, working overtime around the clock to meet that deadline, I guarantee it. <laughs> Captain. Yeah? Listen, I just bashed back up for Tibbs and Sinclair. They're headed to the train trestle right now. Also, I spoke with Chris Madison. Here's the story. First, Josie left for the jewelry store. Then Fax arrived. As Fax and Chris were struggling, Ozzy took off. Listen, Joe, I want you to stay here and handle things. I'm going to go over to the hospital and see if that jewelry store owner can tell us anything. OK, OK, listen, I also spoke with uh, Charlene Frame. She was asking about Josie's whereabouts. I just told her I didn't know where she was. Good, let's, let's go with that until we get a full report back from the trestle. OK, I'll call you. Yeah. 